The following video is rated PG for puzzling gameplay. Viewer discretion is advised. A new chapter in League of Puzzles Speedrunner's history begins. Seven players will compete to become our first ever monthly Pokemon Puzzle League champion. Who will tell the rest of the competition to smell you later? Find out today in this, the Gary Open. Hello Puzzlers, this is Cards of the Hearts and I welcome you all to Pokemon Puzzle League Speedrun Tournament 2025. We just finished the last tournament, so kind of a kind of crazy the tur turnaround that this is already, but this is the first ever monthly qualifying tournament for a Pokemon Puzzle League major in our community. This is the inaugural Gary Open, and seven players have decided to throw their hat into the ring to find out who will be the first ever monthly Pokemon Puzzle League champion, myself included. So, should be a lot of fun to see some new matchups, some new history, and maybe some old rivalries will get reheated. We'll see. We'll see what happens over the next few hours of play. So strap in, puzzlers. We are in for a very good day today. But first, if you're tuning into this game for the first time and you're not exactly sure how everything works, allow me to take a couple minutes of your time to explain how this game works and how we are playing it in this tournament. Pokemon Puzzle League is a match 3 puzzle game released for the Nintendo 64 in September 2000 in North America and March 2001 in Europe. It has been re-released multiple times via the Wii Virtual Console in May 2008 and the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack in July 2022. It is a match 3 puzzle game in that if you match at least 3 of the same panel either horizontally or vertically, the panels will disappear. To win, however, you need to do more than simply match 3 at a time. You need to make combos and chains to not only prevent your gradually rising stack from reaching the top of your playfield for a time, but also to send garbage blocks to your opponent to make their stack reach the top of their playfield. You make combos by matching more than three panels in a row at the same time. They don't keep your stack from rising for very long, but they do send small garbage blocks to your opponent that can prove to be very disruptive. You make chains by linking sets of three or more matches together. Make a set of panels disappear, and then have the panels immediately above them fall into another match. Not only does this keep your stack from rising for a longer period of time, but it will make thicker garbage blocks that will be more effective at actually filling out your opponent's stack to the top. If your stack reaches the top of your playfield and the game tries to break the stack through the top, you lose, so you want to avoid this at all costs and force it on your opponent as much as possible. To beat these computer opponents, you will have to either make sure that they run out of time while their stack is completely topped off, send so much garbage to your opponent so that they can no longer make a move, or send garbage to your opponent in such a way so that they think they can no longer make a move. Easy Mode has 11 stages. Normal has 14, Hard has 15, and V Hard and S Hard have 16. In this tournament, players will be racing through those stages to get to the end as fast as they can. The first player to defeat the final opponent wins the race. The first player to win a predetermined number of races wins the match. Best of luck to all of our players. Just like in Tetris Attack, we are doing a series of abbreviated monthly tournament formats compared to our annual majors. Uh, for these seven players we will be starting off in the first round of, of a few matches of our uh, patent pending popcorn level pick format where the easy normal and hard one player stadium levels are available to play for each race and our players will be deciding which of those levels to play first and race against each other in a best of three speedrun race format. And whoever loses the first race gets to counterpick one of the other levels to play, and we will go on until we have a winner. Things will definitely get amped up for the semifinals and finals, though, as semifinals bumps up the difficulty to V-Hard 
And fi the finals get bumped up to S hard. So our players may be in for a little bit of a world of hurt if they are able to advance and keep going. Everyone that is playing in this tournament will be, be uh, getting the opportunity to earn points towards qualifying for the next major tournament next year. And th those points are awarded based on the number of players that are playing. So for the seven players that are playing today, we will have one point for everyone that, that does win the match in the first round. Four points guaranteed to the people who make it to the finals, and nine points will be available for our champion, as well as an automatic top eight seed in the next major tournament. So winning will certainly help you avoid some of the bad matchups early on. And everyone ultimately in these tournaments will be playing for a portion of our crowdfunded prize pool. Since it's a new tournament, we have a new pool. The pool's empty at the moment, but that's only because I have not had time to disperse the prizes from the last major tournaments. That's going to be happening really soon. And once that is done, I'm certain that there will be some amounts rolled over into this prize pool for this next tournament. But if you'd like to add to the pool yourself and make it more worthwhile for our players, by all means, send whatever spare change you've got our way to our Puzzle Speedrun Twitch channel by way of Twitch bits and portions of the subscriptions you pay for will also add to the pool just a little bit. If we reach our initial stretch goal of $500, then the top bracket of the major tournaments, instead of being awarded to the top four, the pool will be awarded to the top eight players. And then if we manage to get to our final stretch goal of $1,000, then basically everyone in the top bracket and so many more people in the tournaments overall will get a little bit of something for their time. So definitely would appreciate anyone that is able to throw some change our way to make this this uh, very random game uh, a little bit uh, less painful to play. In any case, though, uh, let's take a look at qualifying, because qualifying had to be done just a little bit different this time around. Uh, we may be adapting this format for the Tetris Attack tournaments after this present cycle, so let's take a look at how our seven players did. Each player was tasked to do an easy to S hard run. Just play through all of the one player stadium levels in order from easiest to hardest in a one hour period. And once we reached the one hour cutoff, we basically logged the last stage that every participant finished and the time that they finished that last stage in in the event of tiebreakers which we do have a little bit of a gem in the middle of the leaderboard for that but as you can see our defending champion ffr pro 21 definitely ran a few circles around everyone else getting through lorelei in s hard in under an hour good enough for the first spot in second place was was uh, the runner-up from the last tournament, Tayman, getting through Giovanni in in just over 59 minutes themselves for second place. Third place went to I Like Being Smart, getting halfway through S Hard within the hour mark, and then the three people, including myself, in fourth through sixth, all uh, getting through Koga in the S Hard level before the hour was up. Uh, I got through my Koga stage first, so I got the fourth seed. Then Ty ended up with the fifth seed with a slower 
finishing time, and then six snuck in at the end with Okoga win uh, securing sixth place. And uh, rounding out our field is Kanayo, who uh, finished Erica off in uh, just under 58 minutes for the seventh seed. But Kanayo did get a new SR personal best last night. So Kanayo uh, definitely has an opportunity to make some noise in this tournament if they are able to get through the initial rounds and as we look at our bracket puzzlers uh, it is uh, quite the field to deal with the uh, ffr pro does have the lone buy in this field and has an opportunity to rematch either me or ty in the semi-finals which we will see later on in the show, but we will be starting off with our 2-7 and 3-6 matchups. Tame and Endy and Kanayo, I believe in their first ever meeting with each other in Pokemon Puzzle League. Uh, Tame and did beat Kanayo in the group stage of the 2022 Tetris Attack tournament. And I like being smart in 6. I think they've considered themselves a bit to be uh, rivals, if if nothing else. But they haven't played in Pokemon Puzzle League combat since 2020. So, Six uh, might be on a bit of a vengeance tour since Smart was able to defeat him three games to one in that 2020 tournament. But then again, that was Six's first tournament and a lot of things have happened in our community since then, so I will definitely be excited to see how those two will compare against each other. I would like to turn our attention to the live Twitch chat for a little prediction, a little friendly wager on how these matches are going to play out. A little bit of a uh, a prediction on who is going to win and uh, there's only one bet and it's going to tame in and six winning their respective matches so we will see if that prediction is going to hold true uh, it's really hard to say what's going to happen here and can I, uh, I do find does play play a pretty mean easy level game, so Tame Man will not have an easy road there, and Smart N6 are fairly comparable with each other, so I expect to, that one has an opportunity to go the full three game set as well. So let's not keep our players waiting any longer, puzzlers. Let's go ahead and jump into the very first set of matches of Pokemon Puzzle League Spear and Tournament 2025. The first set of matches in our inaugural Gary Open. It is 2 versus 7, Tame and Indy and Kanayo, and 3 versus 6, I like being smart, and 6, coming at you right now! All right, puzzlers, timers are counting down on racetime.gg, where we track all of our race results. And we are ready to start this easy run. Game one, everyone is underway. So easy mode is definitely easy, but if you are a little on the slow side with getting your chains down then you could find yourself slipping up and losing a little bit of time especially early on with Gary not wanting to raise a stack at the very beginning I like being smart we'll also uh, address as Nicole throughout the show gets out first with a 16 that's a 19 for her opponent six I believe that was a 20 for Kanayo and a 23 for Tayman. Tayman's feed, feed a few seconds into the future compared to Kanayo, so keep that 
in mind, but also you'll see Brock refusing to not raise his stack at the beginning, so it's looking like six, seven lines of garbage will be good to win, and and uh, Nicole and six definitely making quick work out of Brock. 15 to 14 seconds, respectively. Tayman escapes Brock in 15 seconds and will take the early edge up top. Kanayo stumbling to the finish here, needing some extra combos to deal with Brock. That will be dealt with, but it's definitely going to be an uphill battle for them going forward. And now that everyone has reached the the uh, real part of uh, easy mode, now uh, all of these opponents should go down to about four or five lines of garbage if you're very unlucky. Smart and Six having no trouble with Misty in their respective stages. Tamian had a very close call with Misty. Just barely not getting to a garbage clear. And those garbage clears will definitely eat up your time. And when you look at that, that is a 10. That's a 10 from 6. Very tasty. And that basically evens up the bottom match quite closely. You also see to some extent our players will be trying to make specific arrangements of combos at the beginning. Because leading with that combo garbage will make the garbage fall on your opponent first. And these opponents, as you might be able to uh, see from Kanayo's Lieutenant Surge, do get distracted by those lowest garbage blocks. That will end up pivotal to overall consistency in the later levels. We might see it a little bit if we get to the hard level in this match. But for easy mode, you can kind of sort of ignore it and just send your fastest four or five lines. And right now it is six kind of pulling away with it just a little bit. Looks Six looks to be, be about six seconds ahead at this juncture. Both players uh, getting past the halfway point, and now uh, both players on top are about the halfway point, and Tamian is a full stage ahead. With 11 stages, and as simple as these opponents get, it it could be a very, very uh, tricky proposition to expect a comeback in this level. But if you aggressively go for four lines of garbage and you end up needing five lines, uh, that could be a place where people could lose a little chunk of time. So far, I can't argue that either any of our players are experiencing any sort of slowdown like that. Although, Nicole gets her garbage cleared by Blaine. Gets a chain, a three chain from the garbage that is just going to be a massive time waste that might do her in for this game one meanwhile Tayman is continuing to maintain about a full stage lead over Kanayo Kanayo's initial troubles with Brock coming back to haunt them throughout the rest of this race That 10 will certainly leave them feel good about their play, though. Alright, Tayman does manage to get through Tracy in 16 seconds. It's actually 6 leading the group overall, heading into the penultimate stage. And there is 6 done with Rocket. So, it is six with the opportunity to strike first blood in this 
best of three with I like being smart. Smart finishes off Rocket in 12 seconds. Tayman in 13 seconds. So Tayman looks to be in position to finish very quickly. And there is a 16 second Giovanni from six, giving six the first win over Nicole with a time of six minutes. 18 seconds. And Tayman is right there on the top with a 636. I like being smart right behind with a 640. But with that 618, it will be our sixth seed taking their first Pokeball. And a nice little exclamation point from Kanaya with a 12 to get roughly 7 minutes flat. This Kanaya could not overcome the, the Brock difficulties. And that's just, that's just the way it is sometimes. That sometimes uh, these easy races can can uh, come down to like one or two bad stages. It's as Tame Man always says, you gotta avoid the bad stages in these races. Uh, Tame Man uh, avoided more of the bad stages and uh, will be getting his first Pokeball. So with this first race out of the way, it will be up to Kanayo and I like being smart to decide between normal and hard for Game two. One race in, fighting for their tournament lives. There are certainly arguments to be made in any direction. But it appears that we will be going for the whiplash and going for hard for game two. We will have that ready for you very shortly. And after this, I will get my round one match with Ty out of the way. And one of us will uh, get to look forward to playing against FFR Pro in the semifinals. I need to remember to hydrate. <laughs> oh, I'm expecting this to go close to five hours if the matches go the distance. And this game can certainly make the matches close enough. So I have to be careful. It is do or die time for Kanayo and I like being smart as game two on the hard level is underway. And our players will face a bit more of a uniform strategy between all of these opponents, uh, especially at the beginning. beginning they, they tend to behave more the same way and they should go down to the same uh, four, five line-ish Strategies that they were playing for the for the most of the easy level. Uh, Tame and Kanayo, as well as Smart, managed to get their 13 second stages for Gary. Uh, Six, I believe, had to settle for a 20 at the start there. That little slowdown could prove to be problematic. Oh, Smart did not get the second four combo, so Brock did not end up topped off. 
So, Kanayo and Smart dealing with some issues early on. Right when they need it the least. But it is still very early in this hard run and Tayman definitely getting some good early results with an 8 second Misty. Oh me, oh my. If that's going to be the way Tayman plays out these early stages, uh, if he's able to execute that kind of fast, might be a force to be reckoned with at the end. We shall definitely see. So it is Tayman with the early edge by about 12 seconds as he finishes off Lieutenant Surge. Meanwhile, Six with a real problem with Misty. Only gets a 38 out of that stage, but you know what? This is hard mode. We will see 15 stages, and there's definitely going to be a greater degree of randomness to these compared to e easy or even the normal level. So, if the occasional stage goes 30 seconds, it will not surprise us. If the occasional stage goes a minute, it will not surprise us. It just depends on what kind of garbage clears these opponents will be able to see. The garbage clear, of course, being a match where, where the panels, the matching panels are touching one of the garbage blocks, which makes that bottom line of uh, that garbage block transform. And every garbage block that is touching that block getting transformed also gets transformed. Everything connected together gets transformed. This is why we try to lead our attacks with two four combo garbage blocks, because they make, they make three wide garbage that when done first in the chain sequence does separate from the rest of the garbage. Don't even get an opportunity to see it with Six's attack onto Koga as Six takes the lead on the bottom, but you will see that principle play out a bit, a bit more uh, reliably as it's a bit more required in the later levels we will see in the later rounds of this tournament. Six gets off a solid three line attack. Three lines was all that was needed. There, a smart needed four lines, but still got 12 seconds for her. Sabrina as well, and Kanayo! with the nine second Sabrina. That will definitely give them a much needed confidence boost. Or maybe just extra bewilderment at how the game is behaving. Tame in who we usually know as uh, someone who uh, definitely makes their emotions visible on camera. Could not have been pleased with Blaine clearing garbage block after garbage block does escape the first effective first half of the run in a little over five minutes does get past does get past them before Kanayo but again it is six with the overall lead looks like six caught Tracy on a bit of a stack raise so that's gonna be a 12 and those kinds of stages will Definitely be hard to get in the end, but they will definitely prove fulfilling. The silly part is, I think if you average 12 seconds a stage throughout the entire hard run, you still fail to capture the current world record held by our supreme Tetris Attack record holder, Yoshi. Because, as uh, 
speedrunning these lower levels definitely requires an element of speed and combo play that very few people in our community are able to replicate. But look at Nicole with that 11 second Team Rocket definitely getting a little bit of, bit of a, an edge closer to Six's position. Again, Six in the driver's seat on the bottom match. I'd love to put this one away right here. Tame in has the edge on top. Oh, Kanayo needed a couple more lines and maybe that Giovanni would have played a little bit nicer. But it is Tayman first into the Puzzle Elite. As is Six first into the Puzzle Elite. And the winners of these matches will be playing each other in the semifinals. So we can get a semifinal preview from seeing how this will play out. Although the semifinals will be played on V Hard. So it will not be a one to one comparison. But we can get an eye for how these players are executing at the least. Oh man, Richie is definitely doing a number on the bottom players. Now Kanayo is starting to feel those effects. And the lead for six is now down to about three seconds over I Like Being Smart. Tayman has a little bit more of a comfortable edge over Kanayo, but Lorelei is definitely making his life a little more miserable. Kanayo is dealing with a Richie that is messing around in the second tier of panels. Please, Richie, get down from there. I think we need to tell Lorelai to get down from there as well. Now we start to see what Pokemon Puzzle League is all about. It's going to be one of those days for our players, isn't it? Tayman has finished Lorelei first on top, but Six is is uh, continuing to move along, getting a five chain onto his Bruno, and a little bit of misdirection for a thirteen. Smart is right behind with a sixteen, though. In fact, I believe that. That uh, basically puts the margin to one second on the bottom. So, Gary 2 will decide this hard race, as he often does. And he is often wasting everyone's time. It is not uncommon to go multiple minutes with Gary, but 6 may not have a problem here. 6 will not have a problem here. The combo trap is in place, and Six will be taking down this match with a hard time of 9 minutes, 54 seconds. So, that will give our Six Seed... Pokeball number two, and the win. And Tayman gets through Gary the second and finishes with a 10-31. That will also grant him Pokeball number two, and the win. So, bit of an unfortunate uh, late game stages from our players. Uh, I think Bean Smart does finish 
with an 1109 and Kanayo is now entering the final stage so let's see if we can uh, send them off on this tournament on a high note Kanayo has to restart their attack a little bit. Does manage a 5 chain, though, which should keep Gary busy for a little while. The combos were not sufficient on top of that, so Gary is going to live for a little bit, and you can see, you can see what happens with these late game stages. Once they get going, Gary, <sighs> we've definitely seen plenty of good speed run ruined by Gary the second. He can take multiple minutes. Nicole almost saw that firsthand today. And I fear Kanayo may be about to see that firsthand. But the double four combos are laid back down. And that will be enough to distract Gary into a loss after a minute nine. So Kanayo will finish at twelve minutes thirty-four seconds. So GG's to all of our players, but it is Tayman and six that will be moving on to the next round, and let's make those results official. 2 nothing sweeps from our second and sixth seeded players. So, it will be Tayman and Six playing each other in the next round, and Six has the chance to do something very funny here. By... Uh, taking home the first Pokemon Puzzle League monthly, as he did take home the first Tetris Attack monthly. That would be an incredibly hilarious feat to pull off. Might be the best story we have going. But we'll see that later on in the show, as the bracket has been updated to see those two square off against each other. Tayman has kind of had the overall edge over six, though. It is Tayman that has uh, swept six over three Pokemon Puzzle League appearances. Six only managing to take two games off of Tayman altogether. But we will see how that will change when we get into the V Hard rounds. Or at least the V-Hard round, the V-Hard races that we will see Tayman and Six get into later on. But it will be myself taking on Ty to round out the first round. And if you are watching live, we will need a little bit of extra setup in order to make sure that this match can be done, so... We will set up for that next match and then bring you bring you uh, an encounter that I imagine will be very epic between your truly cards of the heart the 4 seed and Ty the 5 seed. So stick around. You are watching the League of Puzzle Speedrunners Pokémon Puzzle League Speedrun Tournament 2025. <laughs>